Thanks for tuning in for your Sports Buzz Update. I'm Eric Onichefele. And as the saying goes, revenge is a dish best served cold. And for Abby Wambach and the rest of the U.S. Women's National Team, they've been waiting to get their second chance against Japan for four years. While the MLB is still in its early stages of the season, college baseball is slowly starting into its postseason play. While Quinnipiac will start playing the MAC Conference Tournament this week, the Bobcats aren't just marching into Dutchess Stadium. They are streaking, literally. Sophomore infielder Matthew Batten had three hits in Sunday's first game of a doubleheader and added a single in his final at bat in game two. And welcome back to Sports Buzz. It was another big year for Sacred Heart Football, who claimed yet another title in the Northeast Conference. And our own Julia Kennedy caught up with a player who looks to take his talents from Fairfield to Titletown. Here's the story. Katie hey, Russo. I'm from Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Um, I attend Sacred Heart University. single mom home and she was never she was always like oh you can't play football uh, too physical you're too small this this and that which I've still heard now too but there's always something about football that always made me want to play and it wasn't until eighth grade where she allowed me to play football I played baseball with one of my good friends named Josh Mata and his dad and my mother were really good friends because we had played baseball with each other since like uh, midgets so like we were young we were like 10 years old 11 years old and he's like oh just bring him out there let's see what he got blah blah, blah. I went to put on the pads, and like, I didn't know which one were knee pads, which one were thigh pads, which one were hip pads. I was just all over the place. And I was really raw in the beginning, just kind of just going out there using my athleticism um, to, to garner me attention. And then going into high school, it became more of a kind of a talent thing. And from there, um, in high school, I kind of developed into the player that I am now. Um, but I have a great mother. She was there to support me throughout all the home games. Um, her being from Rhode Island, um, a lot of the away games in like lower, like higher Pennsylvania and stuff like that, it was hard for her to make, but um, the playoff games were for them. She was there in attendance, and it was good for me that I was able to bring her out there on senior day. It's really like the biggest influence you think of where you are today. I want to say, growing up without a father, I want to say is my biggest kind of influence because it makes me want to be something that I didn't have. Um, and I'm not going to take anything away from my mom because I understand that life throws you lemons, you make lemonade, like you, it is what it is. Um, but growing up without a father, seeing a lot of my peers, that my teammates, and just kind of having that father figure. And you know, we look at our coaches as like, as our father figures because they staple what we are, like what we stand for. Kind of like the way I was raised with my mom. Um, my mom and I are both immigrants from Haiti, so my mom being able to succeed and raise a son um, in the United States of America is the biggest underdog role I've ever seen in my life right then and there. Listen, my mom gets a gift on Mother's Day and Father's Day because she's both. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm back home at barbershops. You always hear that old guy talking about, oh, back in my day, if I would have, da-da-da, I would have had this chance. And I'm like, I was thinking about it, like, that's not about to be me. You don't have to make it to be successful. I mean, sure, it'd be nice, but you don't have to, you know, make the millions to be successful. You know, money doesn't define you. You know, the person you are and the, the relationships you build with people define who you are. Tremendous story for J.D. Roussel, a guy that we are all rooting for here at Sports Buzz. We now like to welcome in Julia Kennedy, who got to sit down with J.D. Julia, one of the big things that caught me during that interview was talking about his underdog story. When you hear that word underdog, what did that mean to you when talking to J.D.? You know, the word underdog, I feel like, is thrown around a bit too much in the sports world today. But when speaking to J.D. about an underdog and what it personally means to him, he just gave an entirely new meaning to it. It was personal, inspirational, and awe-inspiring. Finally, it would not be the ultimate American sports e weekend without combining our two favorite things. Sports and eating. You know it. You know where I'm going with this one. The 2015 Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest took place on Coney Island for the 4th of July. Joey, Jaws, Chestnut, last eight titles, but there was a new kid in town. That guy, Matt Stomey of San Jose, California. The Jordan Spieth of Tube Beef. New kid finishes with 62 dogs in 10 minutes, top chestnut. Wow, just 23 years old. Well, mom and dad, that really puts perspective into me. Sorry to disappoint. That'll do it for this week on Sports Buzz. Go to scm.com to find all the latest news and updates. I'm Luke Hetrick, and this is Sports Buzz.